Σε ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ. Ευχαριστούμε. Καλή καλή. Καλή of the uh, Socialist. Socialist Party, Democratic Socialist Party in Cyprus, and he had the, uh, the time to, to uh, answer some of our questions and uh, concerns and worries about what is happening in Cyprus and the way forward. So, yeah, I mean, that is, that is very important. I think, that is, uh, I think this is what the message is, that uh, we have to enlighten uh, our people in the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, every one of them, uh, whatever party they belong, uh, that is uh, important that they are aware of what is happening, the dangers that are happening um, for the future of Cyprus, that, uh, and the needs that they can pass that message to every relative they have in Cyprus, no matter what part they are, because the relation, the family is more important than the party. So, you know, I believe that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would yeah. think that one of the most important things in any negotiations, in any solution, is that um, you have to have transparency. And the president, together mm -hmm. with the negotiating team, has to be transparent to the people of Cyprus, to the citizens of Cyprus. Because it's the citizens in the end who are going to vote for a solution. And if you leave it to the last minute like they did in 2004 uh, during the NAN plan, uh, there might be again, failure, if, obviously, the terms of the negotiations are not uh, the right ones. The quicker you allow the population and the people to know about a solution, the quicker they can make up their mind, and the quicker they can ask questions. The president is elected by the people, and uh, he has to listen to the people. He, he can't just go and, and decide <coughs> and to force a solution on a country. Yeah. That's what I yes, want to of say. course, and all the signs we have now that the negotiations are leading into a deadlock, you know? And it's when that deadlock arrives, uh, um, then the people have to take a vote. I'm going, um, we're trying to convert the converted. The message has to arrive to every single Cypriot here in London. And our duty now is to find ways when Maria is here on the 11th and the 12th, to find ways to come in contact with these people, either through FGR or the you know, whatever. Fedro, yeah. down to um, Brotherhood. We have to make a time and Marinus to say all these things so the people to hear them, so they may make up their minds. So, not to hear the one side, sure. what the president says. Hear the other side as well, and let them decide. And because the media is very important, LGI, Hellenic TV, I believe that Hellenic TV has uh, broadcasted your speech that you did on the 13th of December. Yes. But David, tell me that it wasn't clear. I would very much appreciate it if you could repeat what you spoke during your event, because the recording which Hellenic TV made, it's not clear. Uh, those of us who understand that, mm -hmm. but many people who are listening to it will not be able to understand what you said. So I have a recording mm -hmm. on the computer of the English content of what you spoke. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, I would like you to you probably don't have a copy, but I have a copy of what you spoke. Of course, yes. So I can raise the page, mm -hmm. and I would like you to speak it again, because this can record that better than what was available. I have no problem with that you at have all. No problem. No so problem just at all. carry on. I don't want to take too much of the time. I'll find that. No, no, I think it's important because this is, this is not a meeting, it's a beginning. It's just the seed, we plant the seed of which you must grow, you know. We are very concerned, we are very worried of what is going on in Cyprus. We saw the things in Davos, and, and that is 
a great mistake. We don't all, we all agree that it was a mistake what the uh, president went there, not as the president of the Republic of Cyprus, but even as a leader of the community. And he presented the leader of the illegal regime of Cyprus as a, as a legal representative of a, of, 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 a, of a minority because, you know, this is a minority. What part of NERF, the minority, is imposing its will on the majority? We are in London, about 300,000 Cypriots. Can we impose our will on the majority of the people? In Poland, in Greece, the minority, that is the democratic process. Minority is a minority, they have their rights. And as individuals, they are equal rights. But as a community, they are a minority, and therefore they cannot impose their will. Well, what happens in Cyprus? Oh, George, uh, let's be pragmatic. It's not the minority of imposing, it's Turkey that's Turkey. Turkey. Yes, but let's be very frank. Turkey. Turkey and Turkish. We know that, but uh, it's the Western politics, yes. geo geopolitics, regional politics, whatever you wish to call it. Turkey is important. We made yeah. this point earlier. Let's, let's not to, to mm -hmm. introduce let's the term of political equality. Yeah, it's not that. Political yeah. equality. The United States supports Turkey. The whole Europe, they shut up. They don't say a word. You know, they want Turkey to become member on, on its own terms, on Turkey's terms, not on European terms. So it's not the minority, it's the majority, it's, it's the um, of international... Yes, but they use the minority, you know, to be as a... You know, mm. They use the minority, they don't come out, they use the minority to be Cypriots. You know who was present there, so I don't need to do that. Yeah. I don't need to say who was present. All right, I'm going to read through it as quickly as I can. Um, uh, right, I started off by saying no true, no true democrat should endorse bicommunalism, bisonality, segregation, or any other odious forms of a division. And I, I started off, uh, our dinner and dance was on the 13th of December. And I started off by saying we have gathered here today exactly one month after the murderous attacks in Paris on the 13th of November 2015. And at, a, and at an exceptionally dangerous time in history. On the one hand, our beloved island of Cyprus lies at the front line in the campaign to confront the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And on the other hand, our beloved island is within the sights of the barbaric entity which reportedly wants to extend its so-called caliphate to encompass Cyprus and other parts of the Euro European Union, including Bulgaria, Greece, and Spain. What does this, does this all have to do with lobby for Cyprus? Let me single out three reasons, among many I could cite. Firstly, the so-called Islamic State has engaged in precisely the sort of criminality exhibited by Turkey when it illegally invaded, occupied, ethnically cleansed, ethno-religiously restructured and segregated the Republic of Cyprus in 1974, and when it helped its illegal subordinate regime to make an illegal declaration of independence in 1983, indeed, both Turkey and the so-called Islamic State in Turkey have murdered people or uprooted them from their homes because of their ethnicity or religion. Both Turkey and the Islamic State have despoiled churches and sites of historic importance. I could go on, but time is precious. Secondly, the occupying power in northern Cyprus, Turkey, stands accused of actively supporting or turning a blind eye to the so-called is Islamic State. Indeed, if President Putin is correct, and the evidence is piling up to suggest that he is correct, Turkey has been an accomplice of the jihadists who are fighting in Syria, just a stone's throw away from Cyprus. To make matters worse, President Erdogan has transformed Turkey into a menacing neo-Ottoman and Islamist autocracy which shows scant regard for the rule of law and fundamental human rights. Thirdly, the two island states we hold dear, the Republic of Cyprus and the United Kingdom, now have com common enemies. These enemies are the so-called Islamic State, what Prime Minister Cameron has described as the poisonous ideology of Islamist extremists. And though Mr. Cameron would never openly say so, Turkey. <coughs> the snag is that the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and much of the international community has chosen to perpetuate the long-standing policy of engaging 
in the appeasement of Turkey and thereby allowing Turkey to get away with its multiple crimes and other violations of international law. The policy of appeasement of Turkey. The policy of appeasement has resulted in a leader-led settlement process with twin objectives which are divisive, defective and dangerous. Dangerous for the Republic of Cyprus and dangerous for the United Kingdom and the remainder of the European Union as well. One objective is bicommunalism, which seeks to divide citizens into two separate communities, defined with reference to Christianity and Islam, respectively. The other objective is bizonality, which seeks to divide territory into two separate zones, one for the Christians and the other for the Muslims. At a time when the Prime Minister and Home Secretary of the United Kingdom are trying to promote the virtues of integration and to clamp down on segregation, why is the, is the UK endorsing constitutional and territorial segregation in the Republic of Cyprus? At a time when so many member states of the European Union are struggling to maintain the unity of their populations and the integrity of their lands, why is the European Union endorsing bicommunalization and bizonalization of one of its member states? Gadi then by Galan, something is not quite right. Let me wind back to 2004 at the infamous and unplanned. We are aware that the security of the United Kingdom hinges upon the sovereign basis, the cooperation extended to the UK by the Republic of Cyprus and the common struggle to destroy the so-called Islamic State. If the Republic is ever turned into a bizonal, bicommunal federation, the successor of the legal regime would be in a position to A, veto any venture to cooperate with the United Kingdom over the matter such as bombing of jihadists in Syria and veto the proposed use of PAFOS airbase by the French Air Force. If the Annan plan was enforced today, the following provision would have covered the situation unfolding in relation to Syria. Article 8.4 of the main articles, Cyprus, i.e. a post by zonal by common federation uh, excluding the SBAs, shall not put its territory at the disposal of international military operations other than with the consent of both constituent states until the accession of Turkey to the European Union, the consent of Greece and Turkey shall also be required. Next week marks the 50th anniversary of the adoption of the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, which Turkey, surprise, surprise, had not ratified when it invaded Cyprus in 1974. I would therefore like to end by delivering four messages. Firstly, in response to the murders in Paris, the brutality on display in the Middle East, and the criminality exhibited by Turkey, none of us should wallow in the valley of despair, by the same token, none of us should respond to darkness with even more darkness. In other words, lobby for Cyprus must not and will not respond to one form of extremism with another form of extremism. Instead, lobby will do what it has always done, campaign peacefully, call for the application of the three R's, and offer a humane democratic alternative to bicommunalism and bizonality. Secondly, nobody who calls himself or herself a democrat should accept the ongoing occupation of the northern Cyprus and the occupying power of and segregator in chief Turkey. Nor should any true democrat endorse bicommunalism, bizonality, segregation, or any other odious forms of division. The UK should turn its back to bicommunalism, bizonality. Thirdly, and I'm looking to the future as I say this, the United Kingdom needs to wake up, confront the truth, and be true to what it has signed up to on paper. For its own sake, as much as for the sake of the Republic of Cyprus, the United Kingdom must start to apply in Cyprus the uplifting and enlightened values of liberal democracy, such as human rights, rule of law, the principle of equality, the prohibition against discrimination, the principle of liberty, and the principle of dignity. The United Kingdom also needs to turn its back on bicommunalism and bizonality before it's too late. Finally, I leave you with this thought in the foreword to the British government's counter-extremism published on the 19th of October 2015. Prime Minister Cameron ventured some candid thoughts. Mr. Cameron did not refer to Turkey, let alone British policy towards Cyprus, but he might have well have done so. This is what Mr. Cameron actually wrote. In the past, I believe governments made the wrong choice. Whether in the face of Islamist or neo-Nazi extremism, we were too tolerant or of intolerance, too afraid to cause offense. We seem to lack the strength and resolve to stand up for what is right even when the damage being done by extremists was all too clear. Mr. Cameron was right, but he needs to be true to his words and abandon his policy of appeasement and stand up to Turkey before it's too late. 
And I would remind Mr. Cameron of what was once said by one of his predecessors, Sir Winston Churchill. An appeaser is one who feeds a crocodile, hoping it will eat him fast. Spider Man. Hoping it will eat him last. <laughs> anyway, that's um, interesting. Whether anyone listens to what we say or not, well, politics is dealt with at a very high level. And well. sometimes uh, words alone uh, will not change uh, international politics. No, but um, they play an important part to persuade people and think again, you know. And that's why recording this speech and um, with David... Uh, well, could uh, I ask what response we have had from the British MPs who have received the content of your comments? <laughs> Interesting. What, what, what response have we had? Well, um, on the night, the response uh, was very positive towards a solution. But let us not um, fool ourselves. I mean, these are politicians. And the politicians obviously um, want to make sure that uh, they have a future in politics, not only today, but in the next elections. We do have very, very good friends and very good members of parliament who support Cyprus. And in particular, I would have to mention Mr. Uh, Mr. David Burroughs. Um, David has always been a staunch supporter of Cyprus especially on cultural heritage issues as well, but believes, believes in what we say and believes that we need a just solution, democratic solution, and everyone's human rights must be respected. And all politicians that we have as friends want that. How that is perceived by his, um, their government, in particular Cameron and the cabinet, is a different issue. Um, but we will not, con we will not um, stop from passing on our messages to our friends, and we have built even more friends, uh, as, uh, as um, our good friend Nick uh, Yanulu has assisted in taking a delegation to Cyprus very recently, and will continue to do so, because pressure can come from all sorts and all, all sorts of ways. Um, yes, our politicians are there to assist us here in our community, and we've got to make sure we exercise our voice towards them, not just a minority within only the areas where members of parliament have a very substantial Greek Cypriot population and votes, even outside in other, in other constituencies as well. Jeremy Cor Corbyn is a very close friend of us. Mm -hmm. He often came to the elections. I have written to him and I, I told him that we disagree with the, the version of a common solution. And of course, uh, I invited him to come. He's been very busy, and he referred me to our local MP, who is a new MP now, Kerr Starmer, who took over Frank Dobson, and I have written to Kerr Starmer, explaining to him that the solution that uh, is proposed by the United Nations, NATO, uh, England, and is the wrong solution by the way by Communal. And uh, he hasn't responded yet, but uh, I am working on it. And I think that, yes, it's a it's a direction that we, all of us, Cypriots in, in, in England, we should pursue uh, the local well, and, yeah. and it's cross-party. I mean, yes. Uh, I mentioned David Burroughs. It doesn't mean that there are no liberal, uh, yes. Labour MPs that support. Of course, there are. And, and uh, as far as lobbying for Cyprus is concerned, we are non-political, non-aligned. What we look at so is the, the, the support comes from every member of Parliament. Yeah, every constituent, uh, 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 Greek Cypriot, and, uh, and others within the United Kingdom want to support our cause. Um, and that's obviously the messages that we want to put across. It's very simple, very simple. We want a united Cyprus. We want one citizenship. We want freedom of movement, freedom of establishment. We want the right of refugees to return back to their ancestral homes. Um, we do not want segregation. We don't have segregation with Turkish Cypriots in Haringey or in Tottenham or in Wood Green, do we? No, we live, we live side by side. Our next, my next door neighbors. I've, I've got 10 different nationalities down the, down the east side of my, my house. Why not? Why not? We must not allow it's us to be segregated in our own country. It's, 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 it's an apartheid system. Could I, could I ask a supplementary question? Because I remember Mr. Sizopoulos said that at the moment, it's probably 50-50 mm -hmm. 
in terms of how people in Cyprus will vote if the referendum happens. Yes. So my question is, and sorry, that was one of my proposals as my thought before we organized this event, yes. which is the event you had organized and you had spoken at Theatro Technis about the Cypriot population who are not allowed mm, to vote. To vote. Yes. And I cannot help feeling that if uh, a very major process of creating things for people to sign from now onwards for the Cypriots who are not allowed mm -hmm. to vote in the referendum, to, in, in, in the votes as well as the referendum, but mm -hmm. furthermore, uh, can we start having a petition for people who are not allowed to vote to well, sign a petition to say they are demanding for the vote to be allowed before the referendum is formalized? And that would be an issue that I would like to see returned back to Mr. Sizopoulos. I did not want to speak at the time when he was speaking. But the issue is because he spoke during the event when he was here in October, he spoke about how he feels that, yes, people like me, I've been in England since I was 18 years old. What chance do I have of voting for... We talked about other places. We never talk about Kyrenia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so well, my question is, what do we need to do to create petitions to get thousands and many thousands of people to sign the petition to demand the right to vote for the parliamentary election and the government is trying to cancel having a parliamentary election there are complications. that's another issue there are complications, David, on that's another issue but Cisopolis. sorry my, my point is to get a lot of people to sign a petition who are not currently people who will not be allowed to vote will sign that petition and that will make a major event and sorry as a supplementary thought my the things that I talked about two months ago before we organized today's meeting was that and at the end of today's meeting if such a petition gets created that petition can also go to the European Union Petitions Committee for the European Union to explain why we who are Cypriots are not allowed by the Cyprus government to vote for Cyprus. It's against EU law and therefore that issue can be raised in a month or at most two months now before we get to the referendum to get the EU to say to the government of Cyprus, we should be allowed to vote. The government of Cyprus yes. is a there, are there are complications. Okay, please explain. For example, <coughs> should your children be allowed to vote who were born here in this country? Well, oh, the reason I'm raising it is I was born in Cyprus. You were born in Cyprus. I have been in England oh, okay. and I have not been allowed to vote from the time that I have been in England because I have not lived back in Cyprus. Mm. And therefore, that is the issue. Yes, my children will be another issue, and yes, there could be complications, but I should be allowed. And that is something that I feel thousands of people will agree with how I feel and will sign a petition, never mind the children and the children of the children, but the people who were born in Cyprus and who are refugees. We have a, yeah, we have right. to clarify. We have, a, we, have, we have done a research on this, and we submitted our research to the government. Um, our team of lawyers have looked into it. We've developed criteria for those to vote in different categories, um, and we submitted all that. Um, just over a year ago to the government. They took quite some time to reply back through the Attorney General <coughs> uh, and through the um, good officers of the President. 
Um, and now rep the reply that came in writing through the High Commission here, and I mentioned it at the meeting, was that um, uh, fortunately due to the constitutional constitution uh, of Cyprus, the only way that you're allowed to vote is via your residency in Cyprus, and you have to live six consecutive months in Cyprus. Now, <coughs> that again is not true, because there are there's other ways. You don't need to go through the constitution in order to put forward the right to vote in a referendum, which is an exception as far as um, voting rights is concerned. You can do it through the House of Representatives by a two-thirds majority. It has to be uh, the motion has to go by a member of parliament, yeah, and then he has to have support. Now, obviously, the problem there is that we have two major parties, Agel and DC in Cyprus, who are now controlling the future of Cyprus, per se, um, and therefore they may influence their members of parliament to vote against such a motion. But, well, but I'll take several steps backwards. We, as an organisation, have mobilised ourselves, and we're now moving forward with the next phase. Um, I'm not going to say exactly what it is at the moment, because obviously we're, <laughs> we're gathering all the documentation we need in order to be able to then move forward and to put pressure on our government to allow us to do so. Yeah. But I will say that we are having a um, seminar uh, in... Um, um, I'll be able to give you the exact date, which is... I can't remember the exact date now. We only completed it last Thursday, and I, I can't remember off the top of my mind, but I will advise you of, the, of that date, David. Um, and the it's seminar, in February? No, it's not in February. No, it's it's not in February. March? Um, I believe it's in May. Well, I believe that there was due to be a meeting in February, and there was due to be another meeting in March, Correct. for when we talked in December. February and May. So now it's in May. The objective of that meeting is to, is to bring international... Uh, legal experts on human rights, um, and, uh, bring on constitutional issues as well as voting. So they'll be analysing all the different countries, that's Bosnia uh, and uh, Sudan, the Sudan models and all the different models, the Swiss models and so forth, to show that uh, basically we, we can have the right to vote, as other minorities do have. But that will be in May. But we're leading towards is, is, isn't, isn't there a possibility that the referendum no. might be declared before we get no, no, to no, that no, no, in no, May? No, 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 not at all. Um, no, that's not the, no, it won't be. It'll be post uh, June, July, August, uh, post that. The main point is that you have to follow a process in order to achieve a goal. And we're trying to mobilize ourselves by getting total support here in the UK, but also from Cyprus. Because you can only venture forward and put yourself in front of a government if you have been mobilized by not a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, but hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand people. But couldn't, a, couldn't starting a petition from next week create two hundred, three hundred thousand people within the next month? It's not our approach. From, it's not our approach. I mean, I don't, I don't say don't do it, but that is not the approach that we are taking. Yeah. Um, we've, we're, we are following a plan, and we want to continue with that. Uh, a petition, fine. Though we have had petitions for the travel uh, and so forth. We're doing Would you that. support me in Entheatro Technis? And uh, we have to ask other people whether such a petition should be created, perhaps not by Lobby for Cyprus, but will Lobby for Cyprus <coughs> support Theatro Technis? And will Omospondia, well, when, when Michalis comes <laughs> back, unfortunately he's just gone out, yeah. but that, that was, would be one of the issues that I would like to raise. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I'm also raising that because it was Mr. Sizopoulos who said that he is coming in March and he had said to me, rather than coming today, could we organize a special event for him at Theatro Technis mm -hmm. over and above what the party will do? Because they'll be doing food, they'll be doing music, they'll be doing all kinds of other things. So the amount of time... So 
having because I asked, mm -hmm. will you have something in February? You said no. no we're not nice. So in March, over and above Mr. Sizopoulos coming, mm -hmm. I also contacted Eleni Theoharus. Mm -hmm. And Eleni Theoharus was not able to come for yesterday or today. But she See, is our, one other person David, that... Our, our approach is that um, what we want to do is not um, have our own people come, try to convert ourselves. Um, we want uh, the international community to participate so the message goes out, not only to our media, but the international media as well, about our ratio. And if you have prominent individuals on human rights and so forth who are going to be speakers, um, I think that message will come across far better than our own, who we know. Now, we know what we want, but we want exposure, and we need exposure. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways is obviously being prominent people who will bring in ambassadors and so forth. Uh, they'll bring in the foreign office. Everybody will come to listen because they'll have an interest to find out what is going on, as we did in a lot of other seminars that we've had, where the foreign office attends, mm -hmm. Russian embassies, uh, different embassies came because they had an interest. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is happening here? It's not just myself and Mike Mihalis and Gleachos or others involved in uh, speakers and so forth. Um, and that is the angle that we, we want to take. Because yeah, that's fine. That angle is just fine. But yes. what we are concerned now is the Cypriot community to mobilize it for the referendum. We're doing that. I think that is We're important to enlighten them mm -hmm. and say that, look, you know, don't be influenced by the big parties and and tell you vote and be a yes uh, vote, but uh, think the dangers of, of the Cyprus uh, future if, you, if you're if you not aware. And this is to enlighten them. Absolutely. And this I is don't our disagree. community. Don't and disagree. one of the things, I, again, I always said, almost from there, have made a stupid decision that they should follow each government. Uh, I mean, I was one of the founders uh, of the almost from there, Dr. Kabilis. I think yes, it's about have, time. have to clarify that. That's right, yes. In it's not been... When we have meetings with officials of the government of this country, then we have to follow the policy of elected, democratically elected government of Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have other issues in our community, that's not binding. For example, I'm here. Now, if that was against the rules, if what you said earlier on is right, I shouldn't be here. Because what I am doing here right now is taking a stand against the decision of the current mental office in Cyprus. I'm against it. Because and also you're, you're a representative of your party. And I'm the vice president of the federation. And also mm. you're a representative of your own party, which officially mm. has taken yeah. a stand against the, the government. Well, I think one of the, one, of the, one of the issues that we've talked about quite a lot now in the community, and a lot of people have voiced, is that um, we, the Federation should not be dominated by the political parties. Yeah. Uh, I think the, the, the political party should play no role. They should be separate outside, as members, as other members are. The executive and so forth should be elected yeah, from the community. Yeah. From the community. Yes, that's how it is. From the members who are down there, yeah, will nominate people. Yeah. We're, and this is, this, is, <clears throat> this is democratic. Because, I mean, we had this been there for so many years. I mean, uh, I, there is no other country in the diaspora, Greek, Cypriot, community that has this type of model that I know of. Uh, you, you, know, the, the, you know the reason why. I do know it, the reason it, why. It because, but, uh, because our main problem is a political problem nowadays. If the Cyprus question is resolved and you have not this political problem, then what you said earlier on, it is right. But no, because it is political and the political parties are involved, those are the ones who shape the policy of the government and so forth. In Cyprus, yes, they do. In Cyprus. In Cyprus. I'm talking about in England. Yeah. In England. Oh. That's what I'm talking about. The political parties here in 
The Greek Cypriot political parties in Cyprus are established here in England. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Philip Christopher last Thursday. They don't have political parties as part of the political parties and leaders of the political parties in the diaspora as part of PSEGA. Yeah. Now, yeah. There, there, there's no need. There's no need. The, because, <coughs> obviously, you draw the line of Evek. The other one draw the line of Visi. The other one draw the line of Agel. The other one draw the line of, uh, of uh, Diko. There, you'll all take your party's uh, policies. And you're bringing that into a federal... <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a similar solution to Cyprus now. <laughs> An unworkable solution. Because you yeah. have disagreements. This is what I was saying. Yes, yeah. I was this year. I'm, I'm not saying. See, I, we know. I know everybody within them. Yeah. Everybody uh, has their own ideology. I do. I do believe in that. Yes, Michaelis has, and everybody else has. Uh, the point is, obviously, when they're actually putting their hat on as the political leader of the party, they have to voice the political beliefs of their party. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because that's why you are the head of Evec. That's why you're head of Zico. Yeah, I mean, like the Cyprus problem is uh, objectively is not a, because I'm a member of the party is my concern about Cyprus mm -hmm. as a as a Cypriot, mm -hmm. you know, and that is and that is why we are not members of the federation. Yeah, as well, lobby for I Cyprus. am a member, but we don't officially member. I mean, we are not. <laughs> we're not we're not as an organisation yeah. member, but members of lobby for Cyprus, individual members who are members of associations, mm -hmm. refugee associations or other associations, yes, are part of the federation. And that's, uh, there's no re reason why they cannot. So the Federation can uh, play an important role in enlightening the people. And they're very important. They're in charge of the, the diaspora. They're the ones who are the well, voice of our diaspora. Um, here is the, <clears throat> the dilemma. To enlighten the community on which policy? The official policy of the government? No, man, no, no, but what do we, so what, uh, what, what we are now saying we're here, now why yeah. we're here, our concern about Cyprus and to tell that the official line of the government is not, is putting dangers to uh, Cyprus uh, 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 people for the long term. Well, That's why you know we have end up with Anastasiadis president now. If the people think before they vote for him, after that, would wouldn't happen. Yeah, I mean, but the, 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 the people, coming the next people, Saturday. people voted for him, so we have to respect that. Yes, but we have to respect every president, whoever they may be. Yeah, but and but we're not we're, we're not we're not being personal against anybody. Yeah, he's I mean, an elected member. Uh, and we, 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 we respect him. He's the wrong man to be voted. I mean, respect. I mean, I could stand no. to remember that man when he talked. He was well, that's all right, personal view. And that's, I was, yeah. imagine that, I wasn't that's political. A, that's all right, Maria, that's a personal view. That's a it's personal, personal view. Yes. Yes, well, but we're talking really about personal. objectively now, what is doing for Cyprus. I mean, this, we all agree now, we all agree that uh, what he did at Davos was wrong. Well, there but that is, is coming mean, next Saturday. Correct, yes. Okay, See, we, he will explain what, he will put his thoughts to the community here. Yeah. So the community has the chance to listen to what he says. A month later, um, Sizopoulos is here. So, yes, the community will have the chance to listen to different views from the government. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to brainwash the whole population of Cyprus, by giving the promises. If you accept the solution, uh, that will work, money, and all these kind of things. And because of the problems they are having. The propaganda, the yes, the, yeah. the machinery, the government they're, machinery. They are yeah. buying, they are buying the solution, you know, with false promises. Well, this is why we should work and really. I mean, I was surprised to hear on Mega TV Vasiliu uh, making the comment that uh, we should not talk about the Cyprus problem. We should not discuss it. Let the government, let Mr. Mercedes carry on. You know, I was shocked. Did you hear that on Vasily on the, on the, when he was interviewed with uh, I missed. Lenny and Yeah, he said we should not talk about it. And everybody says this and that and that. We should not discuss it. 
We want people to discuss. See, what we say as lobby is it's not a Cyprus problem, it's a Turkish problem. <coughs> no, no, we have a republic of Cyprus, yeah, and no, we, are, we are a sovereign nation. The problem lies with Turkey, because Turkey is the one that dictates the solution. That's right, that's correct. Uh, to come on this very point, I was earlier on going to make a comment. We don't need to reunite Cyprus. Cyprus is united. Yeah. It's one Cyprus united. Don't forget. So when we talk about to reunite Cyprus, mm. yes, the, the, the unity of Cyprus was broken original. by the invasion. Uh, it's about to be. No, it's that was illegal. That so was illegal. You don't illegal. That's what I mean. Yeah. And under under European law, the whole territorial territory of Cyprus belongs to the Republic of Cyprus. Absolutely. Every single piece of land. And yes, but they're about to abolish the whole thing, are they not? Is that not what the EU and the UN and Britain? are trying to do, which is to abolish the Republic of Cyprus. And everything that you are talking about, I'm sorry, I understand what you're saying, but sorry, they're going to abolish all that. And, possibly, it's not and like that 50-50% is very dangerous. And I'm sorry, that's why this event has been called upon. And I'm sorry, I'm going to come in with another subject which is, sorry, you had gone out for a few minutes when I spoke. When I spoke to Mr. Sizopoulos originally about him coming today, mm. he said no, he could not come. It was very kind of him to contact us through Skype. But when I spoke to him on the phone two weeks ago, he said he's coming for the event that you had mentioned. Is it the 11th? 11th, March. So he said, can we organize another event on the 10th of March? 10th of March? Oh, 11th. Is, no. 10th of March is a Thursday. He's coming late, late Thursday night. Well, he told me he's coming the day before, and could he have the event here on the 10th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have been well, confused. Can, but if it was, if, if it was, if, if he is going to come early in the morning on the 10th of March, Thursday morning, for example. Then we have time to organize an event on Thursday evening. But on the 10th? If, on the, yeah. But if it comes Thursday night, obviously we have no time to organize it. Well, yeah. can I, he, can I he had question? told me... Are you having an official event for him in the Brotherhood? On no. the 11th? Uh, on, is there going to be an official, on the, official gathering? What Marina has to need to do is to have people who have some influence in the society, in, in, in the community, mm -hmm. okay. yes. and there's something similar we did in, no in October. Yeah. Yeah. But um, more people, mm -hmm. say 50, 100 people, you know, who have mm -hmm. other associations of refugees mm -hmm. or um, other organizations, you know, mm -hmm. or people who have influence, mm -hmm. you know, to... By invitation, you say? By invitation only, or um, open invitation? No, I haven't followed it about it mm. yet. Mm. Um, but as 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 many people as they can. The reason why I'm saying that, from my experience, if he's coming for such a short period of time to have two events, is going to be difficult. You're going to split people, and people may okay. go to a main event and then not come to a, a second event. Or that you won't get the same people going into the second event. So this is something you have to think it's very on carefully. The, on the 11th, on the, the only talking, if you are realistic, the only time we can have a meeting is on the 11th. Mm. Right. But this is still available on the 11th. Okay, yeah. so... Sorry, my next question is that I know that Mr. Sizopoulos met with Dr. Eleni Theocharos and the other minority parties in Cyprus have also met with Eleni Theocharis and Mr. Sizopoulos and the, a new process is being created within the parties in Cyprus and that is why I had very belatedly invited Eleni Theocharis to be here tonight mm -hmm. as well as Mr. Sizopoulos. Mm -hmm. So my next question is with reference to the event, if we're not going to talk about having one event on the 10th yeah. 
and another event on the 11th, mm. then, uh, sorry, what we had in mind, sorry George, I don't know if I'm expressing you as well, was that we could have Mr. Sisopoulos, Mrs. Eleni Theocharos, and there's the other UN special representative who had been at very many meetings in Cyprus. Are you talking about the 10th or the 11th? The 11th, because the 11th and 12th is Isabella. Not another day. Is that the 11th? So, I'm not aware about. Um, Meeting Ellen Tahas, who was, um, if he has met her. He was mentioned that he was off to Saudi after my question to meet people to talk about it. He mentioned that I'm off. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I, I'm sorry, I'm talking about a, a broader meeting than just your party, is what we had in no. mind for yeah. the event tonight. And the UN special representative who thoroughly, critically condemned the Anand plan, which is being re-established now. Who was the president? Um, his... Sorry, I'll find the he papers. He was a, a, sometime in April, a month later. The problem he could not come tonight either. Mm -hmm. But... Well, we'll find out if a day in any four years. So, if we have from now uh, until combine it, it might be difficult. Mm. Well, I know, but that's what I'm saying, that George and I, mm. what we had, and I spoke to you mm. on the phone before your 13th of December event to describe what we were trying to create. A fair we'd, already, we'd already had in our meetings before, uh, spe specifically um, set two seminars, although the dates weren't set. Well, you because we have to, February we have, and March. No, February and May. But I mean, the two we're having two seminars: one on on the on the uh, right to vote, and the other one's on property. bringing different people together is a, is, is a very difficult thing because so they all the have other, their commitments. You know. Sorry, the other person that I'm referring to that I had invited to come to Teatro Technis two Zayas. years ago mm -hmm. was Alfred de Zias, mm -hmm. and Alfred de Zias was invited by the uh, Omospondia of Kerignotes and my uncle Alex Eftivulu in the Cyprus Weekly published a number of newspaper articles about what Alfred de Zias was doing and I invited him to come to Theatro Technis two years ago, he couldn't. I invited him also to come to this event tonight and no, he couldn't. And I let him know that when we organize another event, probably in March, could he come to that? And I also, sorry, I also informed Eleni Theocharus, could she also come? So if we're then talking about two events, what do you mean, uh, that, that's... Uh, I'm, I'm just explaining I'm, I what I... I know what you're getting at. Okay. Um, if my, my view is that he asked all these people who want to come together to that? give you a date in April. Could you give us a date in April, you can make it? Because if you set the date, they can say, oh, I can't make it, I can't make it, have other commitments. Ask them first, give us a date, take it as well, granted. Eleni Theocharos already said yes, she couldn't come for today, but okay. yes, she would agree. And okay. I informed her we that Mr. Sizobulus... A date in April. Now, we have a look at the, at the plans and we find a date. Yes, why not? I mean, if Give them a series we of want dates. to be a successful event, send them an email and tell them and ask them, we want to have this meeting, we want to get together. I'll find give a, give us a date, meeting. you can make it. And if they come to an agreement on a date, okay, then the community here, you, you take it for granted. Of course you come. Okay, we'll do that. I think that's it, that baby. Uh, um, Yes, maybe March is too soon and there's another event happening, and as you say... Go to me. Make sure the more we have, you know, the topic has we to have be. one this month, in February, yeah. mm -hmm. Nicolas Kovadovoulos. Yeah. Right. Then we have another one in March, Sizovoulos. Then we have another one in April, that's better. And then we have another we in keep, May, we got another May. And then we have another one in May. Then so we keep, July, we yeah. keep the momentum. Okay. You know? I think that's a good policy. 
you know. We've got to think of, got to think we of the title. get together much more. The title as well, so it doesn't overlap too many times. Yeah. It'd be repetitive. Good, okay. Okay, okay. thank so you very well. much for coming. It was great. And I think... I, but I, I just, just wanted to mention room. again... I wanted to mention again... Oh, sorry, David. Sorry. Something. Yeah, David. Yeah. sorry. I was looking for the Alfred de Zias on the page that I created about today's event, yep. I created a number of links. Yes, yes. One of the links includes all of the links of all the Alfred de Zias articles. Yes. And when you do look at all those, if you have not looked at them in the past, mm -hmm. you will realize what an impor important person he is, mm -hmm. because he is still a UN advisor. Yes. What nationality yes. is he? Sorry? What nationality is he? Um, don't remember. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't no, remember. It's South American? Uh, on my page, there is a link to his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I would urge, and I put on that page, I would urge all... Now, where, he where was he involved in... Where is he based? He's no. based in Switzerland. This is Geneva. Oh, that's right. Geneva. In Geneva. But as a, as a so UN all I'm saying is for a, fu a future event, mm -hmm. he would not come unless certain other key important people are here. So I'm sorry, as a closing thought, I would ask that Lobby for Cyprus, other parties, should also invite him to attend events in Cyprus and for almost one year to invite him to come and talk in England. Not just David and George of Yeni. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we have to lighten up. Okay, we have to that was the last thing I needed to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, everyone, thank you very, very much. Very good. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. the camera is off. That's great. I think we did some good in the result of the toilet. It's great.